my lovely, lovely, lovely imps, it is time for us to talk about pride. That's right. If you're watching this live, it is June 1st, 2023. It is Pride Month. That's right. It's Pride Month. Everybody's favorite month of the year. Um, and we have a lot. I want to talk about a ton of there's so much stuff I want to talk about. Now, obviously, some of you may be watching this in the future. Welcome to the channel. It's probably a few days into June. If you're watching the video version of this and not the live one, you should come check out a live the live stream sometime on demonmama.com. But regardless, there's a lot of things that I really, really want to talk about this pride. Um, but the first topic that I want to talk about is why pride? Why do we call it Pride Month? And honestly, that's a question that sometimes even uh, queer people, gay, trans, uh, asexual, whatever, uh, if you are under the queer umbrella, sometimes the answer isn't always immediately clear. Why do we call it Pride Month? And why do we focus so much on being proud of who and what we are? And the answer uh, is one of history. The very first pride, the, the, the first thing that we see in history as a an event that, that sort of sparked the trend of Pride Month um, was an uprising um, at, at the Stonewall uh, Club uh, in New York. And uh, that is largely considered to be the, the true initiation point of Pride. Um, and it was an uprising, an uprising of, of uh, angry and hurt queer people um, of many stripes, um, uh, transsexuals, transgender didn't really exist as a term at that time, but people who would fit that label, non-binary people, gay people, lesbians, um, and, and drag queens were the people who were all involved at this initial uprising. And it was a struggle between these people and the police. And this struggle came to be because there was a uh, overwhelming oppression that was present at the time. Um, to the degree, in fact, um, I actually have a shirt that shows, I should have had this prop ready, um, but uh, but I have a shirt that shows the sign that was that was posted on the wall uh, at Stonewall, um, and it was a sign that said, "This is a raided premises," meaning that the police would randomly raid this this uh, sort of famously uh, uh, gay congregation location where people would dance together and have some drinks and hang out. Um, and the reason they would do that is because at the time it was illegal to dance with a person of the same sex. Now, to some of us, that's going to seem very absurd. And to others of us, it's going to seem all too believable. It's hard to believe that there were laws on the books at any point in history sometimes that literally said, uh, yeah, you're not allowed to slow dance with somebody who... Uh, 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 who appears to be the same sex or gender as yourself. Um, and, but, but that was the, the state of affairs at that time. It was a, uh, a regime of enforced normalcy. And the normalcy that had been decided by the powers that be, the government at the time, um, which was heavily influenced uh, by a conservative culture that was heavily influenced by conservative Christianity, uh, the, the norm that had been decided on at that time was heterosexuality. There weren't raids on clubs where heterosexual people were dancing together. There weren't uh, laws forbidding slow dancing between uh, heterosexual people. And the cra crazy thing is there were also laws at the time on the books that were explicitly targeting you being able to slow dance with somebody of the same sex in your own home because at that point it would become a matter of public nuisance 
If anybody knew it was happening, they consider so. And there's cer so we know there certainly weren't laws against that. You think that the cops were bashing down the doors of of straight couples' houses because they were dancing to the to a you know record? No, they weren't. Um, pride came about as a result of resistance to a cruel and oppressive set of uh, legally enforced norms, an imposition of values by uh, state powers, by society at large, uh, an assertion that ho heterosexual people are for some reason better, more natural, more uh, uh, fitting, more morally good than gay people. And so why pride? Why have pride in who we are? Because it is a refutation of the idea that we are not good, that we are not beautiful, that we are not incredible, that we do not contribute to the world, that we are not of value. That is, we refute that idea. And that is the spirit behind pride. It is a refutation of this absurd norm this idea that 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 heterosexual normalcy is somehow better and more beautiful than everything else that exists it is a rejection of the naturalistic fallacies uh that 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 society sometimes plays on these idea that oh it's unnatural no it isn't it's absolutely naturally occurring if you heterosexuals can celebrate your naturally occurring sexuality presumably why can't we why can't we celebrate our naturally occurring identities? It's a refutation of guilt. It's a refutation of shame. In our society, guilt uh, is wielded like a sword, okay? Uh, especially in America. Uh, but, but in most uh, uh, modern capitalist influence cultures, uh, uh, that also happen to be heavily influenced by extremist Christianity, extremist evangelical Christianity. All of these societies are obsessed with shame and they are obsessed with guilt. They use guilt and shame to mentally torture people to fall in line without ever having to be formally corrected at all, even though they often do. We know that if you have no shame, it wears your sense of shame. If you don't have a sense of guilt, it will be beaten into you. With cops like at Stonewall or beyond, uh, with, with teachers, parents even. So pride is about taking strength in who we are and asserting that men who love men are beautiful. Women who love women are beautiful. Non-binary individuals who love non-binary, non-binary, non-binary individuals are indeed beautiful. That there is a beauty in love. That there is a beauty in self-realization. That there is a beauty in expressing oneself truthfully to the world. That is the, the assertion of pride and why it's called pride month and why that name has stuck for so long when i first came out uh i encountered a lot of negative responses for those who don't know some of you are new to my channel i am both gay, uh, and I am also trans. I'm a transgender woman. Um, and I also consider myself non-binary. And I'll explain that for people who don't understand how you can be trans, a trans woman and also non-binary. I'll explain that in a minute. Um, but when I first came out to my family as trans, um, the reaction was very severe. Um, my... In, Oddly enough, the first person I told did not react negatively to my face. However, 
word very quickly spread through my family against my will. Uh, I was outed forcibly um, to a lot of my family members. Um, and some of those family members, the majority of those family members, took a very hostile position to the degree that, uh, that uh, finances were used against me and ultimately housing was used against me. So at the time of my life, I was very dependent on my parents. Um, I had decided by, after being encouraged, of course, by my family to achieve scholastically, I had been accepted into a very prestigious film school. I was very lucky. I got, uh, I worked really hard in my senior year of high school to get scholarships um, because I didn't have a whole, like my family wasn't super, super rich or anything like that at all. Um, uh, and, uh, and so I was in film school. And upon the discovery that I uh, had come out to my family as trans, uh, uh, my parents decided that they would no longer support me uh, continuing at school. Um, part of this was under the myth that like school had turned me trans. Uh, part of it was because they knew that I was receiving uh, uh, therapy for being trans, that I was talking to somebody about it, that there was somebody who was willing to sit there and ask me questions and hear me uh, out on it. But uh, I was completely and utterly uh, cut off financially. It got to the point where uh, my own debit cards and things like that had been completely disabled because I had trusted my parents with them. Uh, I had my cell phone disabled, so I wasn't able to call anyone. Um, and I ended up having to return to home where I could be observed and watched by my family at all times. Uh, at which point they then encouraged me to go to a Christian counselor. And this Christian counselor, who was allegedly supposed to help me, uh, gave me the advice that I should wait until I was 30 years old. Now, the time that this happened, I was 20 years old. They wanted me to wait a decade just in case I was somehow mistaken about my identity. Um, and you'll notice that immediately this starts to tie back to what I was talking about, that the Christian therapist's main goal was basically to imply that there was something wrong with being trans, that it was a, uh, that it was a, a thing that you should uh, uh, try to avoid at any cost, that being trans uh, living as yourself was something to be avoided. And while he couldn't, because he was a licensed therapist, tell me uh, not to transition, he could tell me that I should wait to think about it more. And he could imply that I was rushing into something that was harmful and bad. And he could fill my mind with all of the terrible things that would happen to me as a result of being trans. Interestingly, all of those terrible things are perpetuated by people like himself, people who believe that being trans was uh, something to be ashamed of. Now, I decided to seek my own uh, therapy outside of this Christian therapist, and I finally was able to convince my parents to, uh, uh, well, I just stopped going. I just said, I'm not going to go to this guy anymore. I think he's full of shit. And unfortunately, shortly after that, once I refused to go to the Christian therapist, I was kicked out. So I went from having all of my finances, uh, stripped away from me, all of my ability to communicate with other people stripped away from me to ultimately having my housing stripped away from me. At which point, it was, thankfully, my best friend uh, who ended up offering me a place to stay. And I will always be thankful for that. My friends uh, were always way more accepting than my family by a long shot. Um, but that whole situation taught me something. Um, because it wasn't just people... Um, I didn't even mention, it's been so long since I've talked about this. I should mention this. When the day came that I, uh, was finally kicked out 
of my home. Shortly after that, I was given a letter by one of my family members, a letter in which they said that if I ever showed up uh, near them or my siblings, and in their words, it was with my freak flag flying, that they would kill me, that they would shoot me with a gun, um, that they would meet me with a shotgun and kill me. Um, and uh, I still have that letter. I still hold on to it. It's in storage because I always wanted to remember uh, the level of uh, hatred. Because sometimes when we get to pride, you hear all kinds of arguments about how, uh, oh, it's, it's, you know, why, you know, wh how come I have to, how come I have to justify your existence? Why do I, what is it? Why can't I just have my opinions and you have yours? Why can't I just not care? You know, how come I got to care? Well, no, but it's not about making anybody else care. It's the fact that none of these people actually keep their opinions to themselves. They're aggressive. They're violent. They ex they force them on their own children. They force them on their neighbors, their friends, their uh, their their extended family members. My entire family uh, uh, exiled me for simply being honest about the fact that I wanted to be a woman. Yeah, some of you will remember that I showed that letter on stream. Um, a long time ago that I showed that letter. So there is a regime of social norms that are arbitrarily enforced based on generally religious principles, generally Christian evangelical principles, sometimes Catholic, uh, Catholic, uh, uh, principles, but generally, at least in America, evangelical principles. And these have been asserted as the default and the norm. And all throughout our society, there are apparatuses that reinforce these ideas, that blast guilt, that blast shame, that blast threats uh, against queer people of all types, gay, lesbian, asexual, transgender. Non-binary. And uh, that's, <laughs> I guess what I'm trying to say here is that that's why it's about pride. That's why it's about saying, fuck that. That's why it's about saying no. That is not acceptable. This is not an acceptable state of the world. There is no, this illusion that everybody should just do their own thing and blah, blah, blah is not true. That actually every day of our lives, we are beset by uh, a regime of, 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 of totally arbitrary Christian influenced shame, guilt, pain, and suffering that gay people to this day, I mean, guys, Do I need to talk about the state of affairs for trans people in the United States right now, where we have close to 500 explicitly anti-trans bills moving through various uh, state legislatures all across the country? There is a massive genocidal push to force trans people out of life, to shame them, to, to tell them that they are wrong just for existing, to say that they are somehow pornographic just for existing, to say that they are dangerous to children just for existing. It's disgusting. This is a disgusting push. And, and that's why pride is more important than ever. That's why pride. That's why every single June, Gay people get together and stand strong together and celebrate together and get a little loud. Because frankly, we're being bombarded on all sides all year round by messages telling us that we're disgusting, by messages telling us that we're not beautiful, that we're wrong. Let me give you another example of that. Something that I've encountered a lot in uh, fellow gay people. How many, how many, just real quick in chat, um, give me, uh, just, just put a number one, just put the, let the number one in chat. If you have felt guilt 
about the idea that you won't have a legacy because you're gay or trans. Just put a number one in chat if, if, if you've ever felt that. If you've ever been made to feel that way, like that you uh, are somehow like you're ending the reproductive line, you're ending your family line. Look at this. Of course, the chat is going to go flying with this. Every single fucking gay person I've ever met has somehow has 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 expressed this and felt this. I've heard this so much from fellow trans and gay people all the time that, uh, oh, you're, you're gonna, you're gonna damage your ability to reproduce. How are you ever gonna have a family? How are you ever gonna do these things? Okay. I'm not saying if you've ever like personally felt guilty, but if somebody's tried to or brought it up to you, okay. I'm sure tons of people are. I'm sure tons of people are are don't deal with the personal guilt because they don't care or whatever. But a lot of people have. There is nonetheless a massive attempt. Look at just, I mean, God, you saw how many ones came up on the screen there. How many people came up and said that? Um, Zoe Vex says, we were literally told that we were a waste, a waste for not spre spre spreading our blue eyed genes. And of course... The truth is that reproduction, having kids is not the only way to have a legacy. Having kids is not the only way to affect the world. Having kids is not the only way to be remembered. And having kids is not the only way to have a family either. Not even, not even including adoption, which of course is a thing that gay people and trans people can do if they so desire. But above and beyond that, that when it's heterosexual people, uh, the pressure is, is so much less even. And of course the pressure still exists, but that it's often accepted for a straight person to be an artist or to be an engineer or to be a scientist and to leave their legacy in the world. And yet for gay people, it's an immediate panic that everybody is constantly bringing up and constantly being like, you're killing your, your family line. You're an end of your genetics. You're going to lead to the end of Western civilization. In fact, it's funny because I have an example of this right here. Here is the ace in the hole just today. Any society that isn't normatively based on heterosexual family formation is definitionally doomed to collapse. Pretending that society ought to be apathetic about such matters, or even worse, condemnatory of the presence of traditional norms, is civilizationally suicidal. Interesting. This idea that heterosexuality must be the norm, that it must be encouraged at all costs. It's actually kind of interesting, isn't it? That on one hand, they assert, they scream, it's natural, it's natural to be heterosexual, it's unnatural to be gay, it's natural to be cisgender, it's unnatural to be trans. But yet on the other hand, apparently you can't just let it be. Apparently you have to go out of your way to ensure to build rules and norms and laws that insist that people have to behave a certain way. So which is it? Is it natural or is it unnatural? Do you have to do it yourself manually because it's so unnatural that you have to build laws and rules and societal norms around it? Or is it a natural occurrence? It's almost like they're full of shit. It's almost like what it's actually about is asserting their ideology on everyone else and just doing a little sleight of hand, claiming it's normal to be heterosexual. Actually, guys, you wanna know the real truth, the deep and secret truth? The secret truth is it's fucking normal to be gay as shit. All throughout history, all these people who, who claim that they're, or who seem on the surface like they might be heterosexual, oh man, they like a lot of stuff. And if you look at, if you look at the consumption of porn across America, sure seems like a lot more people really like that gay shit then, then, then they like to let on. It's almost like actually the natural state of humanity is much more broad than just heterosexual. That people, even people who end up getting married and having kids, they often like a little bit of gay shit on the side, don't they? Sometimes they like it a little more than they like to let on. Sometimes their wife likes to get involved too. 
Seems like people are a little more fruity than these psychopaths want to admit. Pride is about dismantling the complex of pointless guilt. Pride is about disassembling emotional torture, a, a society that demands that you be miserable. Pride is about recognizing beauty where beauty exists. Pride is about celebrating love in all of its forms. Pride is about celebrating self-expression. Pride is about becoming aware of ways that we can pass on our legacy that don't just involve having more kids to feed into the, uh, the work machine. Isn't it interesting too, not to get all anti-capitalist on y'all, but this is a leftist channel after all, isn't it interesting that it just so happens that Christianity's natural family, their ideal family, their heterosexual, multiple children, have as many children as you can, quiverful movements, all perfectly align with a, the need to have more soldiers and more workers. Isn't that interesting? Isn't it interesting that those two things align literally perfectly? That, that the only way that matters is if you're producing new workers for the capitalist order that weirdly takes on all of the rules and moral standards of Christianity. It's almost like capitalism and Christianity grew out or that I should say capitalism grew out of Christianity and that they remain locked forever. Isn't that interesting? Pride is about throwing off the assertion that a government or a church or a family owns your body, owns your expression, owns your future. It's about saying, no, actually, I get to decide who I am. I have to live my life in my body. I have to live my life. I get to decide who I am. That's what pride is about. All of these things. Now, there's another thing I wanted to talk about with regard to pride. Now that I've gotten out of the way the basic, uh, uh, some, some personal stories about why pride is important to me, about how guilt is used to try and make people feel ashamed of who they are, about how it's used to, uh, to set up violence against people who defy a, a, a norm, I want to talk about something else, which is the broader, the broader cycle of discourse around pride. There are, there are a handful of conversations that come up every single year around pride. One of them I've already touched on, which is this, well, why do you have to be so loud about it? Why do you have to have a whole month where all you talk about is being gay? Well, maybe it's because we've already answered that one. It's because all of the time, even during Pride Month, all that gay and trans people have to hear all the time, all that queer people have to hear constantly is about how we're wrong about everything. We're wrong in some way. We're defective. We're unnatural. We're blah, 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 blah. That's why. That's why we take this one month and we get all of our energy up and we try to make a loud noise for this one month. Honestly, we need a year. No, we need, we need a decade. We need a pride decade. We need a year of relentless proudness about being trans, gay, queer, uh, uh, bisexual. We need, a, we need a fucking decade. Maybe more. Maybe we just need the rest of time as an apology for the fact that we've had to spend so long dealing with this crap. But... There is other things, of course, that come around. There, of course, is uh, uh, the, the discourse around marriage, 
around the fact that, oh, well, why do you have to, what is, traditional marriage is between a man and a woman. Of course, it, and, and I want to address that one as well. We hear that all the time. Well, you're gay, so why do you have to, why do you have to encroach on our traditions? Why can't you just be okay with a civil union? And of course, the answer is, well, first of all, there are gay religious people. You know, that's that should be a very obvious one. I know that some religious people don't believe that that's actually real or that gay people are allowed to be religious, but actually there are gay religious people, as it turns out. But secondly, marriage, and you might notice this has a thematic tie to something I just said a few minutes ago, marriage isn't just a religious institution, is it? Marriage is actually built up by the state. The government gives you tax benefits for being married. The government gives you all kinds of legal benefits for being married. So it's not just about religion, is it? It's almost like the religious aspect is trying to control equal access to the government benefits, but then when they're talked about, when it's brought, when the light is shined on the fact that this is a discriminatory practice, that all of a sudden it's like, oh, it's just religious, guys. It's just religious. Why can't we just have our, you know, God said it was a man and a woman. You know, what are you, what are you getting all worked up about? Isn't that, an, isn't that a little odd? So that's another one that you're going to hear every single year around pride. And then, of course... Uh, this year especially, you're going to hear uh, two, two different discourses that are often intertwined. And just a warning real quick, this is going to get, uh, um, there's going to be some tough, tough to topics, as if there hasn't already with me talking about uh, the bullshit that I had to deal with when I first came out. Uh, but there's going to be a couple of tough moments in this one, so just be prepared, okay? And that is kink at pride and the groomer narrative, okay? And uh, the groomer narrative is this, uh, is a moral panic that has been whipped up over the last year or two. However, it has reoccurred throughout history. And the groomer narrative essentially argues that uh, children learning at all or being exposed to at all to gay people, uh, uh, gay, uh, homosexual, sexual health, anything, basically anything that is, is remotely tied to gay people, uh, uh, representation, seeing a gay kiss on TV, seeing a gay couple on TV be acknowledged, seeing a gay marriage, a uh, gay sexual health, any of this, all of this counts as somehow grooming children. Now, that's of course insane, especially when you uh, when you consider the fact that heterosexual people do the exact same thing all the time. Our media is completely loaded with uh, even children's media. Children's media is completely loaded with heterosexual sexuality. Uh, children's shows show characters kissing all the time. Children's shows talk about girlfriends and boyfriends. Children's shows even sometimes directly reference sex, not even as a joke. Sometimes they just directly talk about it. And of course, every school in America has uh, sexual education for young people because as it turns out, sexual education is one of the absolute best ways to prevent uh, uh, teen pregnancy, to prevent the spread of STDs, and to uh, enable children to avoid getting abused. But if, but all of a sudden, when, when it's gay people, it's somehow grooming. Now, of course, for those who don't know what the actual definition of grooming is, grooming is when a predator, uh, usually someone known to the victim, usually a, a family member or a priest or a community leader or a teacher, uh, goes out of their way to uh, basically lure a child over time uh, into a position where they can be uh, uh, abused. Uh, grooming off often includes uh, taking a kid aside, um, uh, to, to, to be spending lots of time alone with them, to slowly introduce them to, uh, highly sexual contexts, sometimes via, um, molestation, sometimes via exposure. It's not anything that is being talked about 
with in this groomer panic and the groomer panic is all over the place uh i don't i don't feel like i need to spend much time justifying just how crazy the groomer rhetoric is it's been used by basically every single major right-wing news source they've brought this thing up this groomer panic the idea that there's grooming going on and they have no evidence of it their evidence is a drag show exists okay and of course despite the fact that priests are statistically one of the most common roles, one of the most common type of person who is able to get access to, to actually groom children, that's always, of course, ignored. And instead, the focus is placed vaguely on gay and now, especially these days, trans people. Okay? And one of the... Uh, uh, Source? Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, you want me to go into sources? Let's just look at the at the uh, uh, at the uh, current expose um, on the uh, I believe it's the Illinois diocese. Um, the it, thousands of children who were abused and it was covered up by Catholic priests. You can look at the at the recent release of all of the information in France, where it was shown that uh, in in recent in recent history over 300,000 children were abused by catholic priests this is uh evidence that has been collected over time by the by the french government you could talk about the uh scandal that just blew up earlier this or late last year i believe on the southern baptist convention where it was revealed that the southern baptist convention was hiding serial abuse by a large number of of its priests so there's there's some sources for you to go dig into but that's not the focus of this but please i ensure you go go look up those stories uh, with an open mind and you will find exactly what i'm talking about as to why this is the case but instead this groomer narrative that is given an incredible amount of screen time this is being blasted by all of these right-wing talking heads all over the place and it comes up every single year about pride they say oh oh they gotta have their pride event so they can you know they can expose sexuality to children this is something that i need people to understand the idea of 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 heterosexual normativity and the intrinsic hypersexualization of gay people and trans people are a part of that same societal control that I've been talking about this entire time. If you if you insist that anything to do with gay people, anything to do with trans people is this is a sex act. If you define all of homosexuality, all of transsexuality, all of transgender uh, expression as sexual in nature, well, then all of a sudden you can do this little this little sleight of hand where you say, well, it's exposing children to sexual material. And what they're actually, of course, referring to is the existence of a gay person. There's another example from chat. The John Jay report, which was from 2002, found that 4% of all Catholic priests had molested children. Incredible. And yet there's no narrative, there's no anti-priest narrative, there's no screaming talking heads spending all their time talking about the groomer panic around the priests, even though there actually is some evidence there. Instead, what you have is a push to define all, uh, all, uh, all gay people all trans people, all drag queens as inherently engaging in public sex acts. And you see this, by the way, uh, with the drag bans that are cropping up all over the country. There are now in multiple state legislatures, I'm talking dozens of state legislatures, are now pushing bans, total bans on drag. Drag, which is dressing up in costume jewelry, now, are there adult drag shows? Sure, there are drag shows that include nudity, and those obviously aren't appropriate for children. But most drag shows do not include any nudity. In fact, the entire point of most drag shows is not nudity, it's the outfits, it's the over-the-top outfits. But this is being defined 
as inherently sexual and therefore inherently threatening to children. And this ties in exactly one-to-one -one with another discourse that constantly comes up around pride, which is this kink at pride discussion, which I'm going to preempt this year. That's right. Nobody has jumped on this and been willing to bring this up as early as me. I'm the first one, and I'm going to tell you the fucking truth right as it is. It's the same fucking shit as the groomer narrative. They equate somebody wearing a collar they equate somebody wearing leather straps. They equate somebody wearing a mask as a sex act in and of itself. And they're going to come up with all kinds of very silly arguments. Some of them will say, well, it's the intention that matters, but you can't know anyone's intention. And there isn't a good measure of intention. And I'll show you an example of this. When a heterosexual couple wears golden rings that symbol their eternal bond of submission and servitude to one another, we don't consider that a sex act, do we? Even though, by the same definition that a mask or a leather harness or a, uh, or, or a collar are simply symbols of self-expression that can be used in a sex act but aren't always, so is a ring. If you go and read Christian wedding vows, if you go and read the biblical definition of, uh, of uh, the, the Christian biblical definition of marriage, it explicitly says that a woman must submit to her husband. If that isn't an approved form of BDSM, I don't know what is. And yet no one, never, has there ever, ever, ever been a discourse about whether it's appropriate or inappropriate to wear your wedding ring. Because as it turns out, a simple representation of who you are or what is important to you or the bond that you have to other people is not in and of itself a sex act. And we should never, ever pretend that it is. And of course, we could talk about other examples, things like Hooters, Things like uh, bil billboards containing sexual Im extreme sexual imagery. Things like Sports Illustrated being stocked in everyday stores. Uh, tabloids showing lascivious photos all over the place. Commercials showing much more explicit uh, acts of sexuality than anything you'll ever see at a pride parade. And yet you never hear anything about it. There are hundreds of locations of Hooters. Hooters is literally named after a slur for tits and the icon contains an owl who has tits for his eyes and the dress code requires that the women wear short shorts and tight tops. And that's considered a family restaurant. I'm not fucking kidding you. And yet every single year we have a meltdown over kink at pride because somebody wore a leather harness and that's icky to them. This is the normalized shit. And Sometimes you'll get a, a conservative who goes, well, I don't approve of that either, but bullshit. They've never made a fucking moral panic about that. They don't fucking give a shit when it's straight people doing it. And guess what? The truth is that fucking the existence of Hooters doesn't hurt anybody. The existence of a, of a lady in a, in a bathing suit going doesn't hurt anybody. The existence of a guy wearing a dog mask doesn't hurt anybody. The existence of a person wearing a leather harness doesn't hurt anybody. The existence of somebody wearing a, a collar doesn't hurt anybody. This is why this fucking discourse is full of shit. It never actually explains harm. They never have any evidence of harm. They never even care to talk about it. They instead appeal to a vague sense of Christian disgust with abnormality. And you'll notice that the one theme through everything that we're talking about here is asserting and reinforcing a heterosexual, usually Christian, norm. Notice that? Through this whole talk, all of it has been about norm enforcement. All of it has been about asserting a, a set of behaviors that are deemed as morally appropriate and good. An 
excellent point from another board person in chat. Another board person says, I got on someone for complaining about Target uh, having tuck-friendly swimsuits when they ignored the child bikini section, which was right next to it. Isn't that fucking wild? Isn't that fucking bullshit? Doesn't that just lay out exactly how bullshit all of this is? That if they make a swimsuit that makes it easier to conceal your genitals for trans people, that's somehow bad. It makes it easier. And yet it'll be right next to a section of sexualized outfits that are normalized and sold to children. Every single year, gay people, trans people, queer people of all stripes have to sit there and, and sort through the blatant bullshit, the blatant double standard that this society has simply decided that they think that heterosexuality is better. They don't actually have any good reasons for it. They just decided that and they enforce it on the rest of us and we're just supposed to sit there and take it. No, we will not. No, we will simply not. That is ridiculous. There are so many other things I could go into on all of these things. We could talk about the normalcy of, as as Proving Beetle brings up, child uh, beauty pageants, which are hives for child abuse. And yet, where the fuck's where where is the where is the uh, conservative outrage about those? They love those things. We could talk about all that, but we don't have to. Kink at Pride is totally acceptable. Kink is simply a representation of alternative forms of sexuality, of alternative forms of relationships. Tell me, what is the difference between a collar and a leash and two golden rings? Tell me what the difference is. The collar and the leash sim symbolize. They are a non-sexual symbol of a emotional and potentially sexual bond. The rings, the two gold rings, are a non-sexual symbol of a potentially sexual and r emotional bond. They are the same thing. There is no difference. There is no difference between uh, representations of heterosexual sexuality and representations of homosexual sexuality, and yet every single year, a bunch of conservatives come out of the woodwork and try to make a big hoopla, a big deal about how somehow they're corrupting the youth and this and that and the other thing. No, they're fucking not. Kink has always belonged at Pride. Kink will always belong at Pride because kink is simply an expression of alternative forms of sexuality. And there's a lot more in common between kinksters and heterosexual marriage than they like to think. They don't like to imagine it, but... As it turns out, there's a lot more commonalities than they like to think. Suet Cider says, rings aren't used in sexual acts. Oh, really? Oh, really? Oh, really? Oh, really? That's interesting. I think you should go to a sex shop sometime and you should go and see just for yourself if there's not a section that is devoted specifically to rings because let me tell you oh yes there is oh fucking yes there is in fact it's usually one of the larger one of the larger inventories of any sex shop most sex shops will actually have little glass cases full of rings that you can use in all kinds of ways rings were the the first erectile dysfunction aid believe it or not I think they mean the wedding band specifically. Well, that's funny because, I mean, neither are most kink props. Most kink props aren't the ones that are actually used in a sex act. Anyway, uh, the groomer panic, the kink panic, they're all the same genetics. It is a, uh, it is a panic. It is a moral panic. They want you to turn your brain off. They never want you to actually assess the harm. They never want you to actually assess whether there's any immoral act going on whatsoever. They simply want you to freak the fuck out. And they want everybody to freak the fuck out. But they specifically want uh, people who are of sensitive nature, who are grossed out 
by gay people to freak the fuck out, who are grossed out by eight by abnormality to freak the fuck out. Everything that you can imagine in the world is used in somebody's sex act somewhere. Everything, I assure you. That's just how it is, okay? Context is very important. And also, representations of sexuality isn't the same thing as a sex act, okay? Um, seeing uh, seeing a, a joke about hooters Seeing a joke about boobs on a sign is not the same thing as having a sex act done to you. They're not the same thing. But when it comes to gay people, anti-gay people want you to think that they are. They want you to think that uh, that like a, a penis-shaped lollipop is the same thing as rape. And it's insane. And it does a disservice to actual victims of sexual harm. Yes, it was JFK Jr. JFK Jr. is referencing the uh, the person where the, the wearing sandals outside is a sex act if your partner has a foot fetish. Well, that's that is the end. That is the end logic of this type of thinking. If you are going to argue that representations or anything that alludes to sex in any way uh, is in and of itself a sex act, then of course that's the end result of it. Okay. That's where your logic is going to go at the end of the day, okay? Uh, if you conclude that intention is all that matters, then you need to imprison everybody because you have no idea who the fuck is getting off to whatever in their mind anywhere, okay? And also trying to police that will break your will break all of society. Anarchy says, they know that that a reference to sex isn't the same thing as a sex act. They just say it because their hate is inexcusable. Of course, they will literally do anything to justify, in the moment, to justify their hate. And it won't be consistent. It is all about enforcing their way of life on other people. They personally are threatened by difference. They are threatened by people who are different than them and they want it gone. There's no uh there's no ifs, ands, or buts to be brought up when you have a popular right wing figures saying that we need to eradicate uh uh, uh transsexuality from public life entirely. Uh sorry, transgenderism was their words. Uh, it is no different than people screaming, we need to eliminate homosexuality from public life. And that is exactly what they were saying not so long ago. The 90s was fucking full of this shit. They've just picked a new target. They know that gay people aren't as strange as they used to be because everybody knows a gay person now. But not everybody necessarily knows a trans person. So now they're picking on trans people. But it's the same fucking bullshit. Okay? It's the same bullshit. Remember that. I'm trying to think if there's any other discourses that come up every Pride year. I'm trying to think if there's any more. Obviously, this year is uh, a stressful year for Pride. It's a stressful year for, tr for queer people of all stripes. There has been an unprecedented acceleration in anti-trans, anti-gay rhetoric. Uh, it is off the charts. I mean, we have conservatives all over the place posting videos of them defacing random pride displays. They're very, very angry right now. Uh, we are hot on the tails of conservatives having a month and a half long meltdown. Um, and, and this is the facts of the situation. Bud Light sent a commemorative six pack of beer to a trans woman, a trans woman who's not even super political. She's just an influencer, like a famous influencer. They sent her a commemorative six pack with her face on it. 
and conservatives have been freaking out for a month and a half. Like conservative news sources have been freaking out for a month and a half and calling for the destruction of this company. There have been a series of bomb threats, shooting threats, in-person threats, and, and defacements in Target stores after Target announced that they were going to have a small section of Pride merchandise in their stores. Not the whole store. They're not turning whole stores into gay into gay stores. They're just going to have a single thing of gender-affirming clothes, Pride merchandise, and stuff like that, and conservatives have completely and utterly lost their mind completely going to the violent going to the the ends of terrorism and violence so this year is a stressful year for a lot of people but it also i want you to take strength in the idea that it asserts our need to be proud our need to stick together to show up for one another to stand for one another to fight for one another is more important than ever these people are emptying their pockets and this is all they've got but they need to be left in the dustbin of history. Their worldview is worse. Their worldview is one of repression. They want everyone to lie about themselves constantly. They want to, they want uh, beautiful relationships to no, not be able to exist. They want gay people to not be seen in public. They want to project their own weird problems onto the entire world. And we should reject that strongly we should reject their anti-gay mentality we should reject their anti-trans mentality we should reject their anti-queer mentality and we should reject their anti-kink mentality as well because it all comes from the same place they have defined a norm in their minds which they think is important which they believe is correct it is their way of living and they want to impose it on everyone else and we should reject it on all of those fronts whether you're gay yourself, whether you're queer yourself, whether you're trans yourself, whether you're a kinkster yourself, you should reject it. Reject their fucking bullshit. We're going to talk about a lot more of this as the month goes on because there's so much to say. I want to talk about the history of pride. I want to talk about uh, I want to talk about um, important moments in the hist in, in gay and trans history. I want to talk about uh, pivotal moments in gay and trans history. I want to talk about uh, incredible stories throughout this month, and I'll do my best to do that. But this here, I want this to be the statement of theme for this year, which is pride. Be proud of who you are. Be proud. Gay relationships are beautiful. Trans people are fucking beautiful. Non-binary people are fucking beautiful, okay? We make the world a better place, a more wholesome and truthful place, a world that accepts gay, trans, queer people, a world that accepts uh, uh, kinksters is a better world. It's a more honest world. It's a world that is less full of pointless misery. And we need to be strong in that. Even in the face of them being threatening, even in the face of them hooting and hollering and stamping their fists, and, and 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 screaming and crying and freaking out even in the even in the face of them getting violent because keep in mind they don't got the energy to keep this up okay they really do not all right and the more that they freak out the more that everyone else sees them for the whiny freaks that they are and the truth is we all know where their world goes okay we know where the hyper conservative worldview goes they believe that women belong in the kitchen barefoot and pregnant they believe that uh black people don't deserve to have rights they believe that gay people should be uh should be arrested okay they believe that uh if you have if you're uh if you're not married by the age of 20 that you're done okay their worldview sucks and it doesn't just suck for gay people. It doesn't just suck for black people. It sucks for everyone. It sucks for women. It sucks for men. It sucks for everybody. They believe in a world where men aren't allowed to cry and and women aren't allowed to have jobs. Okay? That is, that is the end goal of conservatism, is to try and wind everything back to some former era that never even fully existed. We've seen what these people talk about. We've seen the worlds that they advocate for, and we should fucking reject it with solidarity. We stand together and say no. Okay?
And also, importantly, we take good care of each other and we celebrate one another. And we take time this month to celebrate our beauty, to celebrate the beauty of, of girls loving girls and boys loving boys and non-binary people loving non-binary people, of people finding new ways to, to live in harmony together, of finding new ways to be strong together, to express their love and to express themselves. We celebrate all of that as hard as we can and as loud as we can for as long as we want to. And there you have it. If you enjoyed this little pride segment, I assure you this, this is representative of my channel. Okay. I talk about this type of stuff all the time. So make sure you press the like button below and more importantly, press subscribe and ring the bell because you're going to see a lot more of this type of stuff. We're going to go more in depth onto all the topics that I mentioned here. This is just the definitive welcome to pride 2023 statement. We're going to be stronger than we ever have. We're going to stand with each other harder than we ever have. Thank you all for watching my show. Thanks for being here. Thanks for hearing the signal.